Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. My name's Will Brazier, it's transfer season and there's only one man we could get in to talk all about the transfers that are happening right now. It's Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, how are you? Well, fine. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the invitation and uh, ready to answer your questions. <laughs> well, let's get a lot going on. Let's get straight down to business. I wanted to speak to someone that's been sort of out of the headlines the last couple of days, which is quite surprising. Harry Kane, is there any news and what's going on with that? Not yet, honestly. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to be very slow. Uh, as I always say, this is not going to be an easy deal. The situation is still the same. We know the interest of Manchester United with Eric Tenag, who considers Harry Kane as perfect striker for his idea of football. But at the moment, there is absolutely no message from Tottenham to open negotiations. So the situation remains difficult uh, for, uh, for Man United. And for Real Madrid, because we know Real Madrid have an interest. Carlo Ancelotti is a big fan of Harry Kane, so the interest is absolutely concrete. But Real Madrid also know that this is not an easy deal, that this depends on Tottenham, on Daniel Levy. So Daniel Levy has to communicate in case he wants to sell Harry Kane or to open negotiations for Harry Kane. He will speak to clubs, but at the moment, this is not happening. So it remains a complicated deal. The conversation between Harry Kane and Tottenham will also be crucial to understand the future of the player. So... I feel it will take time. Uh, it's not something that is going to change in the next few days. Uh, it will take a lot, of, a lot of time also to understand Daniel Levy's final position. Now it's still June, and I'm sure that Tottenham will still try to keep the player to find a way to convince Harry Kane to have at least one more season at Tottenham. And then we will see. But at the moment, I still feel this deal will be slow. Uh, on, just on that, how slow do you think it will be? Like When it comes to the end of the transfer window, where do you think Harry Kane will end up? Good question. Honestly, it all depends on Tottenham. It really depends on Tottenham. It's really difficult to predict today because at the moment there is not an advanced negotiation. There is strong interest because May United have strong interest, Real Madrid have strong interest, but it's not an advanced negotiation. So at the moment it's, it's not easy at all and I want to keep Tottenham into this story because it looks like it's going to be or Real Madrid or Manchester United, but Tottenham are into it and Tottenham are going to fight to keep Harry Kane. So I think they are absolutely into this story and they're not just selling the player. Another striker I wanted to talk about, Victor Osman, who's linked with Manchester United, links around Chelsea and Newcastle. Is there any news on him? Yeah, for Victor Osiman, now it's important to understand the final price tag. I think it's going to be crucial this week to understand more on Napoli manager because before you decide, OK, we let him go, what kind of price tag he will have, uh, you have to pick the new manager and to understand what's going to happen with the director of football. The director of football is crucial to decide on this kind of deals and Napoli still have clarified if they will continue with the current director of football or if Cristiano Giuntoli, director of football of Napoli, uh, has a proposal from Juventus. So they have to clarify something on that. So we have to wait on, on that one. I think it's going to be important to understand the final price tag because I see in the rumours 100 million euros and I'm told absolutely not enough. Uh, and I feel Napoli will only sell the player in case they can make uh, a record uh, Serie A uh, sale. So more than 120 million euros paid by Chelsea for Romero Lukaku uh, two years ago. So it has to be a really important proposal. May United remain into the race because May United had contacts for Victor Osiman. They are informed on the situation. Again, it's, a, it's another slow deal because it's not easy to negotiate with Napoli. Napoli and Tottenham are probably two of the most difficult clubs to negotiate with in, uh, in, in European football. So this is why it's not an easy summer for all the clubs interested. But May United are there. Chelsea are there. And let me mention also PSG because also Paris Saint-Germain want a player. The feeling I have on Bayern is that they wanted Victor Osiman, but in the recent weeks they feel it's going to be very difficult to pay that money to Napoli. So Bayern are probably looking at Vlaovic, Colomoni, different kind of strikers. And now for PSG, Chelsea and May United, this is a three-horse race for, uh, for Victor Osiman. Another one I wanted to talk about, it seemed nailed on uh, going into last week, but Declan Rice had an amazing week for West Ham United, won the trophy. A few different videos emerging of him saying he's staying at West Ham United. Is that just sort of him saying it, or that's the position he's got to take, or is there any sort of chance that for West Ham fans that he could actually be there next season? I think it's going to be very difficult to see Declan Rice at West Ham next season. Uh, he's been incredible this year, so probably... He doesn't want to create a problem to, to the club. He knows that it's important to share always positive messages. And we also have to respect West Ham because at the end, they always ask it for a very big fee and the player ended up staying at the club in the last two, three years. But now it's different. Now it's different because Arsenal will submit an official proposal for sure. Their idea, their intention is very clear. And so this proposal for, uh, for Declan Rice will arrive. I think that there are also other clubs uh, prepared to attack the situation in case this won't go through with, uh, with Arsenal, including Bayern. But the priority of the player is now to stay in England. So Arsenal have a big opportunity. I feel they have kind of match point. This week is going to be really important to try to reach an agreement with West Ham because on player side, he's open on staying in, in England and joining Arsenal. He's not 
a done deal. So let's clarify that because in the last two, three weeks, it was looking like, okay, Arsenal have signed the Rice. Not yet. Now they have to submit a proposal to negotiate with West Ham and then we will see how the conversation will go. But this week will be really, really important for the Rice to Arsenal. Another midfielder in demand, Moise Carcedo. Chelsea linked with him heavily. Manchester United also sort of there in the back running as well. What's the latest with him? Yeah, about Man United today, we had these, these rumours because they always had a good relationship with the player side. Since he was in Ecuador, Man United were uh, close to signing Moises Caicedo. It was a few years ago when he was still in South America. And so they are kind of informed on the situation, but there is no bid at all. No bid from any club at the moment. Uh, I think they are all waiting for uh, Brighton to decide the final price tag. From what I understand, it could be something close to £80 million. Pounds. So I think this could be the right price tag to to sign Moises Caicedo in the summer. Uh, let me say that Chelsea are there because Chelsea are there. Chelsea wanted a player in January, but then they decided to attack the Enzo Fernanda situation. But uh, Caicedo remains in the list at, uh, at Chelsea. Arsenal are there because Arsenal had two bids rejected in January, £60 million pounds guaranteed fee, £70 million pounds the second bid with the dons included. So they were very serious for Caicedo and he remains in the list. But it's not an easy deal at the moment because the focus is on is on the Clarice. So I think Chelsea at the moment uh, are really working behind the scenes on this Caicedo deal. But again, nothing is agreed, nothing is advanced yet between clubs. So let's keep this race open. But I'm sure that Caicedo after McAllister will be the next star to leave Brighton this summer. Uh, well, you mentioned McAllister. Obviously, he's gone to Liverpool, but they've been heavily linked with a couple more midfielders. Are they are they close to signing anyone? Not yet. I would not say close. They are monitoring many midfielders out of Europe uh, because there are many opportunities. So, it's important for Liverpool after McAllister. It's been a fantastic deal because they pay thirty five million pounds for a player who is probably worth sixty or sixty five. So they've been excellent in that. Now it's important to understand what kind of player they want to sign. They are speaking to the agents of Kefren Turam from, uh, from Nice. He's one of the players they have in the list. Same with Manu Kone. So both players' agents had conversations with uh, Liverpool regarding a potential transfer, but there is still no official bid. Also, Gabri Vega from Celta Vigo is one of the players that Liverpool are monitoring, really appreciated by many in Premier League clubs. So for Gabri Vega, there is an open race, but this is a very interesting player with a 40 million euros release clause included into his contract. So Gabri Vega is, uh, is one to watch, but I would keep it open. I think Liverpool will go step by step. This was the decision when they decided to leave the race for, uh, for Jude Bellingham in April. They decided to focus on McAllister, then the next one with different kind of skills. And so now conversations continue with agents of Kone, Turam, Gabri Vega, and we will see what kind of decision they will make in the next weeks. Just on Liverpool, obviously there's been so much speculation around that midfield and rejuvenating that, but are they looking in any other areas from defence or up front as well? Yeah, there is a possibility for Liverpool to sign a new centre-back. This is an idea they are discussing internally. Uh, let me say it's important to understand at the end the budget they will have because uh, it depends also on how much they will spend on the midfielders. The priority this summer is to sign new midfielders and to refresh the midfield. Last season was complicated in that position. Many injuries, many players left the club uh, as free agents uh, from James Miller, Oxley Chamberlain, Naby Keita. So it's important for them to have new midfielders and so focus on the midfielders. But then a centre-back is a possibility. Liverpool are speaking to some agents, some intermediaries to understand conditions of some potential left-footed centre-back deals. Uh, so they are exploring that market. Uh, I can't guarantee that they will sign a centre-back this summer because this will depend on the budget, but they are exploring that kind of market and so this is something that we have to keep open, I think, for the second part of the transfer window probably. Well, speaking of centre-backs, you just recently reported about Manchester City and, and their top target as well. Yeah, their top target remains Josko Gvardiol. Josko Gvardiol is a player that uh, Manchester City absolutely love. They have in the list since last summer. When Nathan Ake was close to joining Chelsea uh, last summer, it was July, uh, Manchester City had the name of Josko Gvardiol in the list and they were considering a move for Josko Gvardiol. Then at the end, they decided to keep Nathan Ake and so nothing happened. But Josko Gvardiol has always been a player super appreciated by Pep Guardiola. So I would keep his name into the list for, uh, for City. And then we have to mention that there are also other clubs exploring this possibility. Why it's complicated? Because Leipzig wants Gvardiol to become the most expensive centre-back ever in the history of football. So more than 80 million euros. Uh, they want more than 100 million euros. So it's a complicated negotiation. But Man City are there. Man City had conversations. Uh, there are discussions ongoing. At the moment from City, they are not prepared to pay same fixed fee as Real Madrid paid for Bellingham. So this is a crucial point. Uh, more than 100 million euros is considered way too much for Manchester City, but they are in contact with people close to Josko Gvardiol, and so this is a possibility. Let me clarify one point. Red Bull Leipzig 
are very clear. Big money or the player is prepared to stay for one more season and they sell him after the Euros in summer 2024. So it's important for City to act in, with the right timing, but also with the right fee. Otherwise, Leipzig will keep the player. And then just on Man City as well, Kovacic has been linked, but I didn't know if that was sort of linked with Ilkay Gundogan, if he stays, if he is staying, if there's another year there with, with the Kovacic deal happening. Is it happening? And what's all the latest with that? Yeah, with Kovacic, what I said a few days ago is that they have an agreement with the player. The agreement with the player is done. So Kovacic said yes to Manchester City. It's a long-term contract. Kovacic is really excited to work under Pep Guardiola. So now it depends on the clubs and it depends on Manchester City. Let's see what Gundogan will decide. For Gundogan, there are multiple possibilities. City offered him a new deal, one more year plus option for further season, so potential two-year deal. Barcelona offered a three-year deal to Gundogan. Uh, Saudi clubs are offering crazy money to change his mind and try this possibility to, to Saudi. Uh, Arsenal are also well informed on the situation of Gundogan. So Arsenal asked for information and it's not easy, but it's one of the players they have in the list. But let's see what Gundogan will decide. I think he said the truth after the Champions League final. Nothing has been decided yet. He wants to take some time to decide together with his family. And for Kovacic, Manchester City are waiting to speak to Chelsea because now on player side, the deal is ready. They have to speak to Chelsea and they have to understand how much Chelsea want for Mateo Kovacic, who is out of contract next summer. So Man City don't want to spend crazy money, but it's also true that Manchester City sold Sterling for big money to Chelsea one year ago when he was uh, with one year left on his contract. So there is this kind of situation to, to resolve, but I'm sure that Kovacic is top target for Man City in the midfield. Uh, one of the other ones that was sort of really highly touted at the start of the, the summer has been James Madison. That's gone a little bit quiet. Tottenham and Newcastle linked there. What, what's the latest on James Madison's situation? Yeah, both clubs want him. Both clubs want him. Newcastle already wanted him one year ago. Last summer, they were trying to convince the player. Then uh, he ended up staying at uh, Leicester because he wanted to, to continue there. But now it's different. Now Newcastle have Champions League football. They can offer Champions League football an important contract. And so there are conversations ongoing between the agents of Madison and, uh, and Newcastle. So this is a concrete possibility. Eddie Howe is a big fan of the player. This is why he was asking for him uh, already one year ago. And then there is Tottenham, because Tottenham are now going step by step on the new targets. They want to do many things on the market. And so Madison is one of the players they really appreciate. They already had his name in the list before appointing the new coach. Now with Ange Postecoglou, they confirmed their intention to try uh, for, uh, for Madison. So he's a name in the list. I'm sure Tottenham will go for that kind of player, creative midfielder, quality midfielder, and Madison remains a name in the list. So both clubs are pushing. Let's see what happens this week, but nothing is decided yet. For sure, Newcastle consider him a top, top target. So I expect them to go very strong on Madison this week. Just on Newcastle, because getting Champions League football then backed with all that wealth, I thought there'd be so many different links coming in. Uh, the rumours are that they haven't got like a, a massive budget to spend. How true are those? Yeah, honestly, this depends also on the outgoings, how many players will leave, what kind of opportunities they will find on the market. So it's always uh, this kind of, uh, of mentality at Newcastle. But it's true that they don't want to do crazy things. They want to do right things. I think this is the idea of this ownership since day one. And honestly, I really appreciate that because they don't like to do uh, something mad on the market. They prefer to go with regular deals, with smart deals. And this will be the idea. So I think Newcastle will go for three, four important, important signings. This is, the, this is the plan. Then for the budget, it also depends on how many players will leave. But the idea is to sign three or four important players this summer. Final few from me. Thank you for your time, Fabrizio. Uh, we mentioned Saudi Arabia. Neymar been linked there heavily this morning. Will we see him staying in Paris or, or will he be going to Saudi Arabia? No, I think the answer is no to both questions. I think for Neymar, the possibility to leave Paris Saint-Germain is very concrete this summer because PSG already discussed his exit, his exit internally. So this is a concrete possibility for Neymar to, uh, to leave Paris Saint-Germain. But again, let's see what kind of solutions he will find uh, around Europe. Let me say that with Saudi, at the moment, I'm told that, yes, there is interest on their side, but the moment is not an advanced, negotiations with, uh, an advanced negotiation with Neymar because Neymar, uh, at the moment, gives priority to European football. He still has a long contract at Paris Saint-Germain. So it's true there is interest from Saudi, but it's not something concrete, something advanced. And I still think that Saudi uh, know very well that for Neymar it's going to be a complicated negotiation. So probably they will go on different kind of players. They are planning to go for many players in the next few weeks. This is not over yet after signing Karim Benzema and trying to finalise the deal for N'Golo Kante, but they will continue for many, many players in the next days. Right, final one for me. We've, we talked to Harry Kane at the start of the show. Uh, Jude Bellingham fe felt like the big summer transfer of the season. Do you think that's the, the peak of the transfer window in terms of star power and, and money spent, or do you think we're going to get some, some bigger deals than that? 
I think we can get some, maybe not bigger, but at the same level. Uh, of course, Jude Bellingham is a fantastic signing for Real Madrid, a lot of money, but a fantastic player to a fantastic club. So I think this is a very good one. But I think we will have some other top, top deal this summer because many things are moving and I think this is a concrete possibility. Love that. Well, thank you for your time, Fabrizio. You'll be joining us across the summer on That's Football. Any questions, get them in. We'll get them to Fabrizio next time. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Thank you.